My lighting is a little messed up. Hey, what's up, y'all? What is going on? It is Tuesday, June 1st. Tuesday, June 1st. And um, let's see. I am that that was that just gives me a shadow. But um yes, I come here in the mo weekly in the mornings to kind of give my rundown. Or give some talk or some chats or something to say. I got something to say about something or something or other. <laughs> um, hope everyone everyone had a wonderful holiday uh, weekend. Holiday weekend. Mine was good. Last week was... Oh, it, it may end it with a bang. Let's just say that. I had a birthday and a graduation in the same week. Back to back finishing school for both my kids. So you hear my little one in there, got a cold, coughing. But you know, kids, they don't like to listen. They have their hands in their mouth and they do all kinds of things. And it's just like you try to teach them, try to tell them, and they got to learn the hard way, you know. But she got to stay away from me because I can't get sick. She got to keep her space, social distancing. <laughs> Still in effect. But, um, so yeah, I've been kind of keeping up with the news and keeping up with a lot of the chatter that's happening. I mean, it's some, it's some pretty intense news happening right now. Um, a lot of people becoming aware, raising awareness about the Tulsa massacre that happened back in 1919. So there's been a lot of news on that and just a lot of things going on around, but I don't really get to dive into, um, like the trending topics much on my platforms. I, I, don't like to unless it's something that that really impacts our culture and i have been reading and hearing about the monique comment the comedian monique who most of us if not all of us love so much um i mean her <laughs> edgy comedy and some of the things that she said really grabbed us back in the day and you know we've if you grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, you love her. You know, it's she she contributes comedy that is kind of healthy for, for your soul. It's the good, good stuff, relevant stuff. But she made a comment about women. Or she made, not a comment, she was giving advice to women, younger women, about going outside presentable and representing your household and your family when you're out in these streets, going to the airport, running to the store. So what she was basically saying is don't go out looking a hot mess. Do something with yourself, you know, throw your wig on, put on some decent clothes. To, don't go out in the bonnet. And, and, and everyone is centering the conversation around this bonnet idea, which I don't think it was, was her point. You know, her point was not specifically about the bonnet. It was really about having a healthy perception of yourself and sharing that and remembering to share that when you're out and about and you're doing things that's, you know, kind of ripping and running. And I'm the type of person I sometimes I'm going and going and I got so much going on that I don't pay my presentation much attention. You know, I'm just a minimalist period. You know, I don't really wear makeup. I don't, I'm free going, flowing with my hair. However it ends up, I wore a hot bun for four years. So I am like not your glamour girl. And for me, it still matters to me to go out. And when I go out to brush my teeth, wash my face, make sure that I have on decent clothes, I, I am not the type of girl that's going to ever be your glamour girl. I'm not that girl, and I never will be. If I'm glammed up, it's for a reason. So, and I'm comfortable all the time. I got on my flats. I slide in my shoes, but I'm always going to be clean, and I'm always going to be somewhat pulled together. Now, it, even if it sweats, you know that I'm running out. Like, you know, oh, that's mom. That's a mom duty right there. She forgot some milk. And then in the middle of cooking, you know, it's, you know, it's a mom duty, but I'm just not going to be slouched out and, you know, out there 
looking stanky and nasty. And she's been catching a lot of flack for it. Um, a lot of people have been saying things that I think are unfair and saying, well, what if somebody is on their way? They got to catch a flight and, you know, be an extreme. That's how you know that you're wrong. Let's start. Let me, let me, let me take it there for a second. When you have to come up with extreme justifications that you know people give folks a pass for, that's how you know you in wrong standing. If I got to go extreme, like what if somebody, somebody, mama dying and they got to get on the plane? Like, come on. That's extreme. That's everybody not traveling for leisure. People try like, okay, yeah, that's extreme. We, we talk about, I'm sure that when I, when I heard and I'm thinking of everyday folks that's just out here, I'm not talking about people that is in a dire situation. So that's how you know that you are, um, doing too much. You're doing too much. And my other point that I wanted to make is that a lot of these women that are opposing what Monique said are women who benefit from women being beneath them. They don't want to help elevate women. They don't want women to feel good about themselves because they are the type of girls who are marveled and, and, and looked up to by these girls who we see not giving much of a care because they don't feel like they can ever obtain what these reality show girls obtain when it comes to glamour and body and hair and all that. You'll never really catch them out there like that. In the one video that the one guy posted, Chad, whatever his name is, of his beautiful significant other, I don't know what she is, was was just, it seemed like she was in the middle of doing something and he, she didn't even want to be on camera, but he put it there. You know, so... I'm just like, come on now. When when somebody who we look look up to in our community put some information out there and they they trying to help us, embrace it. You know, embrace it. And if it doesn't apply, let it fly. And continue to be an example. Why be contentious with like but see that's that that love and hip hop reality show. That's what well, that's what that cultivated. That contentiousness among us, that everything has to be a debate, a fight. It, it, no. All right, sis, we hear you. We love you. Thank you. You know, check myself if I'm doing wrong and keep it moving. That's not hard. That ain't hard. We make it difficult because everything got to be a struggle and a fight to prove what? That you're the loudest, you're the most obnoxious, you're the most trifling. Like, stop. Stop. Stop, and then we get mad when somebody like Kevin Samuels come out and say things about us. Because the brother, he's really saying the same thing. Pull yourself together. You want stuff, but you know you you want you want positions in life that that you haven't worked towards, or you're not accepting towards, or you're not presenting yourself for. So you know it's all the same thing. Just do better. You have to do better, and and if you're not if you're not part of the do the need to get right crew, shut up when people trying to help them get right. You know, that's because you it's that crab in the barrel syndrome. You don't want the crabs to rise. You don't want them to come up. It's comfortable in your space. So you gotta beat them back down. Beat them back. No, it's okay to wear bonnets. It's okay to be trifling. I'm sorry if you don't feel like it's trifling, but I think it's a little tacky. But anyway, I my time is up. It is what it is. I'll let y'all.